What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul and this is Paul in the Cloud. Today we're gonna go over everything in my home lab and my server rack. We're gonna start at the top and work our way to the bottom. Uh, just wanna preface this by saying some of the footage is gonna be grainy. I could not get the camera to mount above my monitor. So when we're talking about the web page and the web pages and interfaces for everything, it's gonna be a little grainy. And then the footage of the server rack isn't going to be the best either because I don't have enough lighting and I can't get a lot of light back there just because of how everything's situated. But if you guys are excited for the Network Engineer series, the first video drops next Saturday, so one week from the time you're seeing this. If you guys are excited for that, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys there. Without further ado, let's get into the rack. All right, so at the top here, we just have a basic StarTech. It's an eight-outlet PDU. It uh, has things that aren't necessary to keep running in the event of a power outage, um, things that can go offline, which I'll cover in a second as we work our way down. Below that is a 48 port patch panel. I got the 48 port because when I bought this, it was cheaper than the 24 port. Uh, and so it would just made sense. And you can see there's one missing. I took that out because I needed it for something else and I have not replaced it yet. Um, but the blue cables are for PoE cameras and uplinks to the router. And then is a trip light 16 port KVM. Below that is a trip light 16 port KVM. It is a 15 port really because the USB controller chip on 16 went out. So I ripped that out of there. And I have to keep this unplugged or if I leave it plugged in too long, it starts to freak out and then is unusable. But if I leave it unplugged and then plug it back in, it will let me work on it for a couple hours before it stops working again. So it's it, it works, it's just finicky, but I don't want to spend the money on a new one when I don't need to. Below that is my home network Proxmox server. So this is the one that actually runs all my main home stuff. Things like my home PFSense and Pi-hole, things like that. We'll go over the hardware and what's inside of it here in a little bit. And yeah, that's that. It's got industrial strength fans in there. I don't know if you can hear it, but let's see. Put my mic up to a little bit. I just made sure there was plenty of, plenty of airflow through it because it's a passive cooler. It's not active cooling on that one. Below that is my dedicated Plex server. We'll go over the drives and everything in there in a minute. And for now it is dedicated. This is one of the first servers I built. Uh, I will probably virtualize it in the next iteration and all of this will be combined into one system or multiple systems in a cluster for redundancy, but I don't know yet. Let's get down, we have a little bit of space, a little bit of cable management going on. My rack mount console, just a normal console, nothing special, works great. Below that is the micro tick switch that we saw in the video when I built, or I discussed building everything. Uh, it has a bunch of uplinks and it goes to my home lab PFSense router and then breaks out and everything else. If we get down here, you can see I have a couple of HP systems here. There's actually supposed to be four of them. They're named HML, HST 1, 2, 3, and 4. 3 had its SSD die, but it's under warranty, so I'm getting that replaced and see the ethernet and power cable. If we go down below that, this is the server I built. Now this runs its own Proxmox server and these run Proxmox, but in a cluster. These have things for infrastructure. So for instance, these two have a VM running on each of them that run by nine DNS. So this one and this one are replicated to each other. Uh, it's just an Ubuntu VM running on it. These are only i5 6500Ts, so they're just four cores, four threads, but I don't need a lot of power, and I want them to be low power because this is kind of hungry. Uh, we'll go more over that in a minute. Below that, this is what I was talking about earlier. Everything else that's not plugged into the PDU up there is plugged into my UPS. So this is things like my home production server and my Plex server. And then the switch up there, which I didn't talk about, is a 48 port Cisco PoE. Uh, all those are plugged in because then I can, in the event of a power outage, I can plug into the switch, the laptop, and go in and safely and cleanly shut everything down before the UPS dies. 
And that's it. We can take a look around the back. It's not perfectly cable managed, but let's look. All right, and for cable management, I have some LED strips on this too. I have my modem up here. It's kind of chilling on top of the cable management. Um, I just got that recently, so everything here needs to be shortened up and arranged in there. If we work our way down, I got some of the cables arranged in rails, and there's the back of the Plex server I just built. You can see all those ports. There are eight Ethernet ports there, and nine if you count the management one on the motherboard itself. Uh, some more cables, and that's about it back here. On the top, I have my home uh, Wi-Fi router. It's just an AP, I mean. It's, it's a router, but it's an AP mode. And then you look around the side, you can see it looks more messy, but I've been slowly cleaning it up as I've been making things permanent and changing things up. Uh, so with that, let's go jump into the servers themselves and look at the GUIs. And I just want to apologize. This film is probably grainy. I do not have the best lighting over here. This room is actually separated by two separate walls going to where I actually film the other videos because it gets loud and I wanted to keep it in a place where I could not hear it. But let's jump to the other camera and we can go over everything on the house. All right, guys, now we're going to go over everything that's in my home lab and my home network. First, we're going to start off up here. We're going to start with, let's do my main home Proxmox. So as you can see, I have Proxmox uh, 7.4 up here, and this node is called the control node. It is what controls everything in my house. That's why. Um, start off, we have Pi-hole, and it is just running in a container, just like uh, IPAM is. IP address management is keep track of everything in my home network and my home lab. Uh, helps me to know what I have free, what's not free, and I can, if I ever forget something and I'm making DNS records, I can just refer to that because I always note what it is inside of there. Um, Pi-hole, I have up here a bunch of uh, queries and a bunch of domains on ad lists. Uh, these are, a lot of block queries are from smart TVs. Uh, Plex is trying to reach out. I have, like, look at this, New Relic, Roku, Amazon, Pandora, things like that, things that run in my house that I don't want reaching out. I don't want data to be collected or pulled down from. Uh, look at this, catalog.gamepass.com. Uh, permitted. But then you can see the clients here and blocked total. Uh, this one is my phone. I do a lot of online shopping. So that is Pi-hole for my home lab. Uh, TrueNAS, as the host I showed you a little bit ago. Uh, TrueNAS is not virtualized, but I want to skip over to this one real quick. This has a few different pools here. It is a Ryzen 5 2600 with 32 gigs of RAM. It has my NAS pool, which is five drives, each of them being four terabytes. And as you can see, I have 5.74 terabytes free. I have another one that is my camera. I mentioned I have the PoE cameras. All of those are running on this one right here. It's a Windows machine running Blue Iris, and it has a actual hard drive as the boot drive, and it saves all the footage to an actual hard drive rather than SSD because I don't want read and write intensive footage destroying the SSD. So it runs on this uh, server. All the footage is placed onto this NAS for safekeeping as backup, and it retains it for two weeks, and then Everything that's older than two weeks is then deleted automatically as new footage rolls in. Uh, I have one called VM Dev here. It's just for toying around with VMs in TrueNAS. I don't use it a lot, but it's a WD Purple, so it's not really fast. It's not good for VMs. It's just I just had it lying around. Interface RE0 is down. That is the main NIC on this board, on the motherboard, that actually failed. So. I put a 2.5 gig NIC in there for when I do upgrade the 2.5 gig. Uh, and that's just what it uses for now for management and data transfer, things like that. Uh, that's about it for this. I don't have too much running on this one. And we'll jump back over to Proxmox. Uh, I have 
Home Assistant, it's not running right now. A lot of the smart devices I had an issue with, they kind of broke. So, uh, and it had to do with Home Assistant. I'll have to reconfigure all that. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, the image server, this is just a Windows imaging server. I do a lot of laptop repairs and flip them on Facebook Marketplace as well. So when I have them fixed, I just kind of plug them all into a switch and let them download from the image and boot up and do a reset from them and have them ready to go for the sale. Uh, UPS, this is my APC UPS. It has a serial to USB and that USB is passed through to this Linux machine, which then displays, uh, let's see if I can bring it up here. All right, and I have it up here. For some reason, the last time the power went out, this did not come back. It died out, the UPS almost died. I got everything hooked back up and this did not come back up. Uh, I'm not sure why, I haven't had time to toy with it and the power outage was somewhat recently. I've just been busy with other things. The UPS beeps like crazy if the power goes out. If I'm not home, I don't have a VPN set up right now anyway, so it's not like I can remote in and shut things down. So if I'm not here and the power goes out, it's just gonna shut down. If I am here, I can hear the UPS and I can go shut everything down gracefully. And then of course my home PF sense. I have this running connected to the internet. As you can see, it also has a connection to the home lab. Um, Obviously, you can't see my WAN IP because that will be blurred out. Um, that's it. All right. For those four HP PCs that I showed you about, here they all are. Uh, they're called HML HST and it stands for Home Lab Host, one through four. Uh, as you can see, three is offline. As I said, the SSD died, but HML HST one has HML DNS 001 running on it. And that is running an actual VM. As you can see, I have some entries up here. I can restart it, reload the RNDC, which syncs it to the second one. Um, I was making some name server changes on this one, testing out, and again, learning DNS. So, uh, RNDC retransfer, and it's gonna retransfer that entry. And then this one is up to date. This is set to be the primary DNS in my PFSense, and this is the secondary. So if this dies, this has automatically have been replicated. Um, to mention, this replication will happen automatically. I was testing this to force it to do that. Um, back to what I was saying, this will be automatic. So if I lose host one with home lab DNS one, this DNS server, eventually, I can't do it now. I don't have ZFS storage set up yet, but I will. This will be able to automatically restart itself on another host. And since this will be a secondary DNS, it'll automatically fail over for DNS queries if it doesn't get a response from the first one. And then again, this will also be set to come back up on host four if host two goes down. I'm gonna run a couple other VMs in these, a couple containers. Um, I'll probably get uh, some type of containerization going and learning on those. Again, these are small machines. They're not very powerful. As you can see here, they have i5 6500Ts, which are only four core, four threads, um, 2.5 gigahertz. They have 16 gigs of RAM and they each have a, I wanna say it's a 500 gig SSD. Yeah, that sounds right. It, they match the host three. So on to the one I built recently. I don't have a whole bunch running, but it has my PFSense VM which this one I can show you. This one is, their WAN is the slash 30 that I have it connected to my other one. LAN is the home lab network. And then I have Debian Wi-Fi. This is the machine with the Wi-Fi PCIe NetIS card that I couldn't get working last time, operational. So it is actually working in here, but if I disable the ethernet, it dies. So I have to have Ethernet and Wi-Fi enabled on this VM, which is fine because it actually, I can search for things. I have it off now. Uh, I was going to show you guys, but it would not start again. That card is giving me all kinds of trouble though. So I might, again, get rid of it, put a USB Wi-Fi adapter in. We move along. I have a Windows 10 VM, Windows 10 001. I'm going to have them numbered. This one is joined to the domain. Um, and the Windows Server Domain Controller. 
This was for testing these functions so I could learn more about it. The domain controller itself does not have access to the internet and I could not figure out why. It's running Windows Server 2022 and there is an issue where people are saying that it's forcing their server into a metered connection and that is what it is doing to me and I can't get it out of it unless I reinstall and then it goes back anyway. Don't know why it's happening, but that's fine. I don't need my domain controller to reach the internet. I have a remote desktop server. This is for playing around and I'm going to install some games on here at some point just for fun and see how it is gaming over a remote desktop. Even though it's in my own network, I still want to do it. Uh, I also have a Windows 11 VM. Uh, my personal machine runs Windows 10 right now. I'm getting used to Windows 11. I support Windows 11 at work already. I just want to have all the kinks worked out and have it usable for me before I use it. As you can see up here, I have a couple templates. I have Windows 10 template, Windows 11. I have an Ubuntu template and a Windows Server template. All of these have been reset with the out-of-box experience um, set and then the machine shut down. So when I boot it up, it's brand new, ready to go. If you don't do that to these machines, they keep the same machine ID and then you can't like join them to the domain or things like that. Same with the Ubuntu template. It keeps all the SSH keys and the machine ID. You have to delete that out first, shut it down, then convert it to the template. And as you can see, I have these ones color coded. Uh, that was more just messing around with Proxmox and kind of learning the tagging. So let's go over one of the big things that I was trying to do in my last video and hoping to accomplish but did not work. I wanted to have a true NAS scale VM running and have all the drives pass through to that virtual machine and then that virtual machine have it set up as an iSCSI pool and then, excuse me, an iSCSI target and then have it attached to this Proxmox host. I could not get ZFS over iSCSI working. So what I ended up doing, I have a SAS pool, which is all of those drives in a pool for 20 terabytes, 19.71 is free. All the rest are assigned to VMs. I also have that 500 gig SSD that was there um, the SAS SSD that is going to be used for other VMs that I want to be higher speed for testing, things like that. Fortunately, I can't use it as a cache like I wanted to. I just could not get ZFS over iSCSI to work properly and it was taking up too much time and I had to start. I had a goal of April 1st to start the six months of learning as much as I can about networking. And I had two days left and I had to decide to either spend the next two days only doing that and probably still not making it work or cutting it off and getting everything else ready. So I decided that I was going to cut it off, just use storage and Proxmox and that's good enough for now. I can get some kind of storage pool later and use it with Proxmox and my other hosts and try to figure it out that way. It's not going to be my main thing, but right now the networking is the important part. And that is about it for my home lab for now. I used to have a couple more things running. I had a Nextcloud uh, running. I had um, a second Plex running, and that Plex was for music, and that just did not work very well, and it sucked, and I don't listen to music that much through it, so I got rid of it, and that's about it. When I built the server that is my main home Proxmox server, I kind of simplified all of the testing I was doing and brought it all down to just what needed to run on that machine. Then I bought these. I bought four of these. This was used for testing. I had it running Ubuntu server for a while on all of them. I actually have a bunch of USB to Ethernet adapters to give each of these two Ethernet adapters. Uh, for testing and creating VLANs. I uh, will get back to doing all of that in this series and that's kind of what those are for is that I can have management and then VM traffic will be actually on its own VLAN. This video is going to be kind of grainy. I've recorded this on one my phone in low light, two on my webcam because my phone will not sit in the mount correctly above me. But if you guys enjoyed this video, if you like my home lab, if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments down below. Hit the like button, please, because there's a few people that watch, and liking it and subscribing and commenting, especially commenting, just ask questions, let me know what you think about everything. That's the biggest thing for YouTube. It's not so much the subscribers. Just 
interact with me. I really want to get out there and meet new people interested in the networking and people that are already in networking and kind of just gain as much knowledge as I can. And I can't do that on my own. Again, I have to talk to you guys. So if you liked the video, remember to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. You guys have a good day. Goodbye.